Well, hi, everyone. I hope you guys had a great weekend. This is Heidi St. John, and this is Mailbox Monday. This is the day of the week that I answer your questions, and we've got a lot of great ones today. Stick around. I think you're going to be encouraged. Well, I'm glad to hear from you guys. And for those of you, I'm going to just remind you right out of the gate today that we love to hear from you. And we'd love to answer your questions and hear your feedback. If you want to reach me, the best way to do that is by going to HeidiStJohn.com forward slash Mailbox Monday. For about eight years now, I have been taking your questions here at the show and reading your comments. And I love to hear what you have to say. And I think it's important, especially because the question that might be on your heart and maybe you're afraid to ask it or you're embarrassed to ask it or whatever the case may be, chances are pretty good that there's someone else going through that same thing that needs to hear from the Lord and maybe just a little touch from heaven that comes through your willingness to submit those questions. And so we appreciate that again. And please remember, keep those questions short and sweet and to the point. And again, you can just submit them to me by going to HeidiStJohn.com forward slash mailbox Monday. I'm going to start with a question we got from Lauren in Arkansas regarding Senate Bill 294. She says, Heidi, I'm in the state of Arkansas and a new bill, Senate Bill 294, addresses school choice, among other things. Our state homeschool advocacy group is in full support of the bill and pushing it heavily on social media. I am disgusted, to say the least, and have sent numerous emails and letters in addition to our representatives. Their support for this has kept me up at night, and I'm truly baffled as to what is happening. My children and I have read the bill, and they've helped me write emails as well. Uh, She goes on to say that she's distraught about this. What else can I do besides weep from the exhaustion I feel from the past years of ever-changing and concerning things going on in this world? Well, the, the first thing, I guess, Lauren, is that I would remind you that uh, you your, our, your job is to do what God asks you to do, what he puts in front of you. So you've, you're doing it, right? You're writing to your homeschool representatives. You're telling them the dangers of supporting these school choice bills from a homeschooling perspective. And again, and just in case I didn't make myself crystal clear the last time I talked about this, I am not anti-school choice bills for children who are in the public school system. So, for example, if a parent whose child goes to the Battleground School District just found out that the Battleground School is teaching that there are 400 genders and that you could be a girl by Friday if you're a boy, and the parent decides they don't like that, they should be able to switch schools to find a different district and the money should follow the child. My beef is with injecting this into private, independent homeschooling, because as you've heard me say many times, and I've had guests on the show to back this up, the studies show that it's true. The history of our government shows that it's true. With shekels come shackles. And so the moment the homeschool community begins to say, we want the government money, what you're really inviting is government intrusion, government oversight, government rules and regulations. And you guys, if there's anything that we have learned from the last several years of the draconian lockdowns, the mask mandates, the absolute and utter stupidity of our government officials, the last thing that we should want as homeschoolers is to invite that kind of scrutiny and intrusion into home education. And so uh, that is my strong counsel. But I also want Lauren to encourage you this way when you've done, everything that you know how to do, when you've taken it before the Lord, when you have uh, acted, you know, God wants to work in harmony with human beings. And he has demonstrated this all throughout history. Uh, When we are at a task that God has sent us to do, it is part the sovereignty of God and part the actions and the obedience or the disobedience of the people that God would like to work through. And so our part is very important in this. And it sounds to me, Lauren, like you're doing your part. And when that happens, you know, my counsel and my encouragement to you is don't lose sleep over it because the Lord sees your heart and he also sees your children and your family. And so we stand in the gap. We do as much as we can to warn people to say, hey, this is a bad idea for this reason and that reason. But then after that, don't let it consume you. Don't let it be the thing that keeps you up at night. The Lord of Heaven's armies 
is aware of all the things that are happening in our schools right now, and he is going to move no matter what. Now, is it possible that we're going to be suffering from the decisions that we make as people and the decisions that we make regarding a lot of these uh, bills and the legislation that's passed recently in, uh, in legislative bodies across the United States and around the world? Yes. But our job as Christians is to prepare not to panic. Panic does not please the Lord. Preparation does. We talked about this a little bit last week when I mentioned the Proverbs 31 woman. It's so important that we understand in our hearts and really take to heart the fact that God does not want us to live in fear. The Bible says in 2 Timothy that God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And so the power that God has given you, the, uh, that you are exercising through encouraging and educating the people around you, including your lawmakers and your uh, fellow homeschoolers in your homeschool community, the love that he has given you for speaking the truth and for wanting to get ahead of this, and then the sound mind that he gives you is what keeps you from living in this constant state of fear. Fear, the spirit of fear, is not from the Lord. Now, of course, there's a good kind of fear and a bad kind, right? The good kind says, oh, that fireplace is hot. I don't want to touch the fire. I don't want to you know, touch the glass, whatever. That's a good fear, right? A healthy fear of not getting burned. An unhealthy fear is living in a state of constant panic and constant worry and anxiety about what may or may not happen, especially with regard to things that are outside of your control. This goes back a lot to jurisdiction. You've heard me talk about this at the show before. Jurisdiction meaning what is the authority that God has given me? So for example, you have the opportunity because you live in the United States to speak into the legislative process, but your jurisdiction, that's not your jurisdiction. You don't ultimately make that decision. Someone else does. And so we do our part to educate our legislators. If you're Heidi St. John, maybe you ran for Congress and you did what God put in front of you. And then our job is to walk this thing out joyfully. It's one of the reasons that I want to encourage you, if you haven't picked it up already, I actually went ahead. I could not wait for Larry to send me the book and it just arrived. So now I've got two of them. But I went ahead and I thought this is a worthwhile cause. And so I went ahead and I bought The Watchmaker's Daughter. Um, you guys... Read the stories of men and women who lived in far worse times than the times that we are living in, and yet God did extraordinary things through them because they trusted him. And so, Lauren, that's my encouragement to you today. Do everything that you can and then stand in the grace and peace that the Lord will offer you through his spirit. Next question comes from Kim in Tennessee. She wants to know what my thoughts are on a homeschool co-op using a system like homeschoollife.com to track your family's personal homeschool information. She's saying that the, the co-op recently went to the system and it requires members to be background checked. Is this standard? I'm all for safety, but the way the world is and a huge push to control homeschoolers, it makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. All right. Well, Kim, I understand why you could feel uncomfortable about this, but I got to tell you right now, that is standard operating procedure. If, for example, you were to send your children to the Homeschool Resource Center here, one of the first things we would do, especially if you were going to be a, a, you were applying to teach a class or if you wanted to be on staff here, is that we would conduct a background check. We do background checks of people that are here because we want to find out, is there a, is there a history of abusing children? Is there something that we should know about? That kind of thing. And so that's not unusual. I don't think it's wrong. I think it's wise. Uh, wisdom would say that you should know who you're hanging out with. In terms of putting your information and data and that kind of thing into a system like Homeschool Life, uh, again, they need that information. What you don't want them to do is sell it to a third party. And so uh, I happen to know that Homeschool Life is not doing that. And so I don't see any cause for alarm or any reason to be upset. That sounds like best practices to me. And we want to keep the safety of our children at the forefront of everything we do. So I guess in this case, I would just encourage you Again, like I was just talking about a moment ago, not to be paralyzed by the spirit of fear. I think sometimes we can see a demon behind every rock and it causes us to live in this perpetual state of, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. I don't think that pleases the Lord. And so if, again, if you were to come to the Homeschool Resource Center, you would see that we have the safety of our students here is paramount to everything that we are doing which is why we conduct background checks. It's why we uh, we have a very robust safety policy in place here. And everyone knows about it when they come here. And it is for the safety and well-being of the families 
at the Homeschool Resource Center. So I hope that helps answer your question. Next question comes from an anonymous listener in Michigan. She says, Dear Heidi, I am a mom to five children and I'm struggling with my oldest. She's done with college, living at home, working full time. She's involved in our church. She's 24 years old. All of her friends and cousins are married or engaged and it's becoming very lonely for her. And I see her having less and less plans with friends. Uh, I see her put a smile on her face and act happy in front of her friends, but I can tell she's hurting. What can I do to be supportive? I've suggested going to some singles Bible studies or finding an interest or a new hobby, but she's just annoyed with me. This is a lonely place to be in life, especially with social media constantly throwing it in your face. Wow. So I have been here with uh, a couple of my kids in their 20s. You may know that most of my kids are in their 20s and now actually moving on into their 30s. And I think for moms, especially because we're so invested in the lives of our children, it hurts to see them struggling when their friends start to get married and their friends have children. And I want to just encourage you from a mom who's been there myself to say the most important thing that you'll do for your kids is to pray for them. And so we pray for our children. We remind them God has a good plan for your life, and he's working that plan out. And I felt it was really important, and I didn't always get it right. You know, there I think that there were times when I uh, I would give instructions maybe to my kids, and it was the wrong instruction or the wrong kind of encouragement, and I would sort of get that eye roll. (laughs) You know, they're kind of looking at me like, "Thanks a lot, mom." Like I could have done without that, you know, bit of advice or counsel or whatever that you gave me. But I think one of the most important things that you can do for your daughter is to remind her that God is doing something in her life right now. It is necessary for her development as a human being and to get her ready for whatever it is that God has for her because we don't all uh, operate on the same spiritual timeline. We don't all get married at the same time. We don't all have children at the same time. And unfortunately, and I am agreeing with you, especially when when it comes to social media, uh, we live in a time when kids like to put the A rail, the, the A reel rather up on social media and the, the fact of the matter is the 20s can be very, very challenging and very lonely. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to go back to my 20s. I'm happily in my 50s now. <laughs> I know I have no desire to go back into my 20s and learn some of the hard and painful lessons that I learned in my 20s as a young mother. And so I would be encouraging her, like I encourage my own children, to lean into the Lord And to remind them whenever God gives you opportunity, joy is not dependent on our circumstances. Joy, which is a fruit of the Spirit, is the unmistakable sign of the presence of God at work in our lives. Joy comes from walking with and listening to and yielding to the Holy Spirit in our lives. And so I wanted my children to experience that joy and recognize that, you know, no matter what you go through, because you're, you're going to get married and then you're going to find that life has other challenges. You're going to have children and you're going to realize, oh my goodness, you know, I thought I was having a hard time before, but this also is difficult. God wants us to be dependent on him every step of the way and to remember that he's always working things together for our good. And I think sometimes as mothers, well, and fathers, I think this is true across the board, we tend to want to rescue our children and not let them work through some of these painful things. And sometimes we do that to the detriment of our kids because we don't let them experience the consequences of their actions either. And so pray for your daughter, love your daughter. Yes, give her you know ideas and suggestions and, hey, what about this and what about that? But uh, I think as the, the world has really lied to our young people about, you know, the glamorous thing that, that the world says it is, if you can just get out from under that, you know, that thumb of your parents and get into your 20s and everything will fall into place. I know very few kids who that actually is true about. And instead, I think we need to focus on helping our children um, develop their relationship with the Lord and to learn the secret, like Paul said, of being content in every circumstance. And so uh, be praying for your daughter and let her know, say, I'm praying for you uh, all the time. And I love you. And I know that God loves you too. All right. Another question came from another anonymous listener in Colorado. And she says, Heidi, our neighbors are transitioning their six-year-old daughter into a boy. You know, um, wow. (laughs) Wow. You guys have heard of Munchausen by proxy. You know, that's what this is. As far as I'm concerned, it's all these parents who are just dying to be on the evening news and dying to get into the latest parenting fad. 
This breaks my heart on a hundred different levels. It's wicked. It's evil. It's wrong. Uh, biology is a uh, is a fact of life. <laughs> One does not simply change one's chromosomes, and the fact that this is happening is horrifying. But this anonymous listener in Colorado has a, a problem that's even more complicated than this. She went on to say that her daughters were playing with the kids next door when the older girl kept saying to her sister, good boy, Max. Oh, you guys, it just breaks my heart. Uh, recently, the neighbor asked my daughters to babysit. Oh, no, no, no. This, I, I don't even need to read the rest of this. The spirit that is in that home that is causing those parents to lie to their child and abuse their child, I wouldn't have my kids go over there for all the tea in China. I wouldn't have them babysitting. I would be very careful about them playing together very often. I would be putting a wall of separation because this spirit that is on that family is demonic as I am sitting here, as I live and breathe. So I'm not saying don't talk to your neighbors and don't be kind to your neighbors, but I would not be uh, fostering deep relationships. I certainly wouldn't be having my kids babysit over there. I mean, if they're mentally ill enough to transition their daughter into a boy what kind of crazy malarkey could they possibly come up and accuse your children of doing when they're over babysitting at that uh, that house? So to me, that is an absolute no-brainer. Uh, I think you can love the family without going along with a lie. And I would tell them just, you know, if it comes up, you know, love on them. If it comes up, if they just go, hey, we noticed that, you know, you don't want to babysit for us, you can say we're very uncomfortable and sad about the fact that you are lying to your little girl and trying to teach her that she can become something that she will never be. We've got to start being bold. And we can be bold as a lion and still be loving. Jesus demonstrated this for us. And so um, I'm going to be praying for you that God gives you wisdom. We need the wisdom of Solomon to navigate this incredible time that we are living in. Uh, something as bold of a lie as the lie of transgenderism uh, requires, you know, and I've said this before, a bold lie and maybe this will help you, but a bold lie requires bold truth. The only answer to a bold lie is bold truth. So what is the bold truth about the uh, transgender movement? The bold truth is that transgender movement, the whole thing is a lie. There is no such thing as a girl born in a boy's body or a boy born in a girl's body. And the fact that we are encouraging the genital mutilation of children and the castration of our young uh, boys through these surgeries is horrific. It's demonic. To me, it should be illegal. And I can't wait for the day when these doctors are tried and sent to prison for what they're doing to these kids. All right, last question today uh, from another anonymous listener in Florida. She says that her husband is now second guessing their decision to homeschool next year because their daughter will not be able to learn English fluently. He says going to school exposes her to more English speakers and that would be helpful with her. Uh, helpful for her. Well, you right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if, if all you care about is if your daughter's exposed to English speakers, then definitely send her to school. But you know what else she's going to be exposed to? She's going to be exposed to trans ideology. She's going to be exposed to critical race theory. She's going to be exposed to gender ideology. She's going to be exposed to the 1619 Project. She's going to be exposed to evolution. She's going to be exposed to homosexuality. She's going to be exposed to all manner of things. But by all means, if English is your primary concern, then she will probably learn to speak English fluently. The problem will be that she'll be learning to speak lies fluently also. We are teaching our children to be fluent in gender ideology, to be fluent in uh, socialism, to be fluent in communism. And our kids are not learning math. They're not learning science. They're not learning history. They're not learning reading. They are learning uh, disgusting ideologies based in these school districts and, frankly, uh, we have a lot of friends in our community here, in the Slavic community where I live, parents who were very concerned that their kids become part of the Americanized culture and learn to speak the language fluently. And so they sent their kids to the public school and they've lost their children to the culture. And that, to me, is a much greater concern. And so uh, I feel obviously very, very strongly about that. And so take it for what it is. I really appreciate you guys writing in. If you've got a question that you'd like me to address or a comment or uh, something you'd like me to talk about on the show, just head on over to HeidiStJohn.com forward slash mailbox Monday. You'll find a form there and I'll answer your questions. I try to do it for sure every Monday, but sometimes I can get them throughout the week as well. So I hope that encourages you guys. Love your people well. Stand in the truth today. And I will see you right back here tomorrow. 
at the intersection of faith and culture.